Making a good vampire deck was a complete pain in the neck. And trust me guys, I have the bite marks to prove it. And seeing this deck see a complete revival of the strategy, changing from sending cards from your opponent's deck to the graveyard, to the ability to destroy your opponent's monster, suck their blood, and special summon them to your side of the field as zombie-like vampire minions, was a pretty cool thing to see. I'm the Cali Effect, and if you guys want to see more videos like this, then go ahead and destroy that subscribe button but more importantly if you think that i'm neck and neck with the other great channels then hit that notification bell because well we're just too strong i also want to take the time out to give a shout out to all of my patreons you guys are so awesome really helping on the content really helping on the equipment we actually just got some new equipment i want to show you guys and it's pretty awesome so i want to say i appreciate every you every single one of you guys for the support and as well show you guys the discord because man you guys are extremely helpful as well posting down your deck lists posting down ideas and keeping things fresh it's a community within inside of a community without further ado i present to you a really really good vampire deck profile for this format okay ladies and gentlemen so looking at the stats of this deck Vampires are extremely awesome. Their attack is off the roof. And not because of their original attack. Natively, the strongest monster in the deck is 2400 attack. But seeing that we have some awesome card effects, I mean, vampire monsters are love to keep it in the family because, you know, blood is thicker than water. Their attacks can go up to 5,000 attack, almost stronger than every single monster in the Yu-Gi-Oh card game. Now, we're not going to look at the defense because they're zombie monsters, but let's look at the consistency, uh, power, and recovery. Something that this deck does really well, and I, I really want to say that it it's just an awesome deck. It's an exciting deck to play. If I were to put it at an event, I want to say local level, but I really think that this deck has a lot of potential. It could top a regional level event, but let's just stay modest with local levels. I think it could top that consistently. So starting off with the monsters of this deck. Uh, there is going to be two copies of Vampire Scarlet Scourge. And this card is actually really awesome in this deck. There's a pretty good reason why I only run two copies, though. Um, its effect is when this card is normal summoned or special summoned, you can pay 1,000 life points to target a vampire monster in your graveyard and special summon it to your side of the field. Um, and that monster can't attack that turn. But if this monster destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can special summon it to your side of the field. And that's what all, all of the new high-level vampire monsters have in their effects, is that they allow you to basically uh, destroy your opponent's monsters. Now, you can say um, this deck has the ability that if your opponent's monster are left open and they just don't stop it, this deck will become Buffett the Vampire Slayers. Get it? Get it? B Buffett, like Buffy, but they're vampire. They'll just eat their opponent's monster. Okay. Anyways, on to the next cards. Um, Vampire Red Baron. I completely hate this card. I think it's not a great card, but Vampire Scourge or Scarlet Scourge actually does have a restriction that he can't special summon himself from the graveyard. Well, I'd rather run a Vampire like Scar or Scarlet Scourge instead of Red Baron, but um, I, I just hate this card because I'm a little bit biased. Um, it's still a really good card. What it does is you can pay a thousand life points, target a vampire monster you control, and a monster your opponent controls, and it basically becomes a creature swap. So that's actually really good no matter how you put it, um, allowing you to take your opponent's high level, really strong monsters in place of your weaker monsters is always really good. But um, I think it doesn't necessarily add much to the strategy other than it being a level six vampire monster, which is really important to this deck. Um, to wrap up the level six, we run one copy of Vampire Grace. Now, this card actually might seem a little bit hefty in price um but it's so worth it while she is in the graveyard if you special summon a level five or higher zombie or vampire monster to your side of the field uh you can special summon this card actually it is a zombie but you can special summon this card to your side of the field by paying 2,000 life points and this card is still amazing because it provides a level six monster to your side of the field it's a scarlet scourge target it just has so many great things going for itself it allows you to load your build your board up with some awesome vampire monsters now that's it for level sixes we do play four level five monsters 
one copy of Shadow Vampire. Now, this card is the starter card of the deck. The reason why is because if you use this effect, the only monster that can attack is the monster you special summoned. So you probably want to use this on your first turn, but if this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one Dark Vampire monster from your deck to your side of the field. And that is just extremely awesome to be able to tour to your Scarlet Scourges to your side of the field to gain their effects as well because this monster gains its effect when it is special summoned. It's just an awesome starter card for filling up your board. Um, it does have another restriction that it can only be used for an Exceed Summon of a Dark Monster, so it is pretty restrictive and that's why we only want one copy. Same thing with Vampire Duke. This card starts off really awesome. When it's normal summon, you can special summon a Vampire Monster from your graveyard to your side of the field, but unfortunately it has the same restriction as Shadow Vampire that he can only be used for the Exceed Summon of a Dark Monster. Now, Link Monsters are out and that really does help but i don't like that restriction at all next is the card that does make our monsters extremely strong two copies of vampire frolin and i used to think that this card was a one of it wasn't that great and then you start to think about it okay so um basically when an opponent's monster or when a monster declares an attack you express some of this card to your side of the field but even more importantly you can pay life points in multiples of 100 to increase a zombie monster or, um, or a vampire monster you controls attack by that amount. Now the maximum is 3000, but making herself 3600 or making any of your other monsters 5000 attack is amazing, especially when you combine the fact that some of your vampire monsters can actually snatch your opponent's monster if they don't read their cards. Now, um, I would say that vampires never take any bets, so there won't be any stakes, get it? And, and Vampire Fallen actually uh, allows you to take no bets inside of this deck because you're probably going to win every single battle that does come around. So um, that's it for the bigger guys and gals. Uh, next, we actually run the little guys. One copy of Vampire, or I'm sorry, two copies of Vampire Retainer and two copies of Vampire Familiar. Now, these cards are extremely powerful for the Vampire deck, mainly because uh, when they're in the graveyard, you can pitch a Vampire card from your hand or field uh, to your graveyard to summon these guys. But more importantly, when they're summoned, Retainer allows you to search a monster and Familiar allows you to search a vampire spell or trap card from your decks to your hand. These cards are so combo-listic. It's just amazing for this deck. It's just insane how you are able to tutor all your cards, all your vampire cards from your deck to your side of the field, as well as provide um, some really good, uh, you know, monsters to your side of the field for, you know, uh, uh, link plays. Now, I want to say that this vampire deck is real thuggish, you know, just with the abilities to search all the cards, you know, take your opponent's monsters um, on the side of the field. So I guess you can call them Fangsters. Get it? No, they some original Fangsters. They some OFs, not OG. Okay, anyways, on to the next cards. Uh, we actually do run a couple of other zombie monsters. Um, before I actually get into those, I want to talk about uh, the other vampire cards. Uh, for, to put it in a nutshell, they're not good. Um, the vampire sorceress allows you to normal summon a monster without tributing, and that's all great because it would trigger almost all your vampire monsters, but it has to be in the graveyard. I'd rather just put other cards in the graveyard. If it, if it didn't have that clause of when it's destroyed by your opponent to search, I would definitely play it if it just said like, I don't know, if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can search. It would it would be an instant more copies of, of that card inside of the deck. So um, we don't play that card. And the other vampire cards just are really subpar. Especially that one that protects all your vampire monsters, but you have to pay multiples of a thousand. Ain't nobody got time for that. Next, for the complimentary vampire monsters, three copies of Unizombies. A lot of uh, decks only play two copies of Unizombie when they combo them up with your Shirinui Solitaire. Now, the reason why our ratio is completely different is because we really want to see Unizombie. Solitaire is nothing but a reinforcement of the army to the deck because we don't play any other Shirinui cards to combo off with Solitaire, mainly because we can't banish like other decks can. But Unizombie is amazing in this deck. Being able to send Vampire Familiars or Vampire Retainers or even Vampire Monsters you need in your graveyard to your graveyard to continue to abuse with your card effects is amazing this deck actually does it all and unizombie is the card to tutor so many combos uh to your side of the field um now next we do play two copies of mizuki to be honest with you guys you can actually drop mizuki to one it's only uh, a good because it's an extender to the deck and it allows it does allow you to extend for some pretty awesome combos um, I do play two because it's still a really nutty card inside of this deck, but getting into the graveyard isn't as easy. Sometimes you got to go into those nightmare monsters. Opening it isn't bad because nightmare monsters do exist. Um, so for the hand traps, the hand traps are actually really good because they're both transmodified targets. 
Ghost Bell on Haunted Mansion is a transmodified target for Mizuki. And even so, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. You won't believe what Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring is a target for. It's a Shirinui Solitaire target. So both of these cards are very live in this deck. Not only because they have some really good effects, but the fact that they also allow you to disrupt uh, the opponent and get into your combos if you need them in a pinch. So that is it for the 23 monsters the 24th monster is farfa um farfa is just an awesome card if you guys aren't playing farfa and, and you're playing beatrice you're probably not playing the deck right because farfa just allows you to have beatrice have disruption on your opponent's turn and it's probably the reason why i would drop mizuki to one because now i can only send twice to the graveyard and i don't really need two mizukis it is what it is and i probably would play a different level five or level six vampire monster because seeing those monsters into your hand to pitch to the graveyard is important that's it for the monsters now on to the spell cards i'm telling you guys this deck is pretty batty but that's just because it's in its blood get it batty blood we're gonna start off with three copies of Vampire's Domain. This card is probably the most important spell card of the deck, mainly because not only does it gives us an additional normal summon of a vampire monster at the cost of 500 life points, but also when we inflict battle damage to our opponent by a, with a vampire monster, we can gain that same amount. So basically it makes Vampire Fallen uh, all the damage that you would inflict with this card becomes a plus. It becomes nothing. You can win battles for free just because of this card. Uh, three copies of probably the better neg ones in this deck is Vampire's Desire. And what this card does, it's, it's just phenomenal. So basically, what it does is you can target one face-up monster on your field, send a vampire monster from your deck to your graveyard, and that monster's level becomes the vampire monster that you sent. Uh, really good for setting up Synchro, Exceed, and Link plays. Um, the second effect... Um, allows you to target a monster on your field, send it to the graveyard to spell summon a vampire monster. Now that seems like a pretty bad neg one, but once you start to think that you steal your opponent's monsters, which are higher level vampire monsters, you probably will desire to summon another vampire monster from your graveyard that might be a little more useful, and then give them their card back. Next is going to be two copies of Transmodify. Transmodify is insane with this deck, so not only does it make uh, Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring and Ghost Bell uh, targets? And that's, that was like literally the pushing point for me because the target for Ash Blossom, if you so need it, is Shirinui Solitaire, will get you into one of your best cards in your deck. And then Ghost Bell actually can go into a Mizuki, which can extend your plays. I just thought that that was phenomenal in case we did break. Transmodify does uh, turn those cards into that. But into the real reason why it's in there, it can actually turn your Vampire Familiar into a Vampire Retainer and then gain Retainer's effect. But more importantly, you can send Retainer to the graveyard for Familiar and then gain Familiar's effect. So it's really good. It can turn Familiar into a Yuna Zombie, which is, like I said, one of the best cards in the deck. And it can turn Yuna Zombie, that is level four, into any of your level five um, vampire monsters. So it can turn itself into a Fallen, a Shadow, or a Duke. Or when it's level five, it can turn into a level six monster, which would be your Scarlet Scourge, the best possible target. Red Baron, if you want to steal your opponent's monster, or Vampire Grace, if you ever need it to your side of the field. I thought that it was really good. There was a point down I was actually running Armageddon Knights and Reinforcement of the Armies, because this same combo that I'm going to show you guys at the end can be fulfilled with Armageddon Knight, but Transpotify just added so much more pop, and then even if we did have dead cards, it just helped mitigate those. Next is two copies of Called by the Grave. Um, this card is phenomenal inside this deck. If your opponent wants to hand trap you, and you're going off with the combo and you call by the grave them it turns it into an extender it's just you're gonna make them pay for it i'll explain to you guys a little bit later why it's so powerful but i think this is probably the most powerful deck it is in one copy of foolish burial to send monsters from your deck to your graveyard one copy of monster reborn and then another copy of monster reborn i'm telling you guys world legacy succession just might be my favorite card in flames of destruction i actually decided to drop soul charge for world legacy succession because I kind of need my battle phase. I like I like attacking monsters, but more importantly, is it an extender? Um, it, it is just so nasty inside of this deck, being able to extend into your combos. Um, that's it for the spells. And if vampires ever put a spell on you, it, it might just become just just for you to come to the dark side. I, I don't got a pun for that. I just thought that that was pretty cool. Next for the traps, for you to dominate your opponent, vampire domination. And this deck handles life point manipulation so well. What domination does is, uh, if you control a vampire monster, so if you're playing the deck, you can negate a spell trap or monster effect. And if you negated a monster effect, you can gain that monster's attack 
cards just really bananas in this deck I, I really don't know what else to say about it it's really good that's it for the main board i really am excited to show you guys the extra deck okay ladies and gentlemen for the extra deck i'm telling you guys this deck is so cold it caught a cold and now it needs some medicine for its coffin get it no nobody all right anyways on to the link monsters we actually run two copies of vampiric sucker this card or vampire sucker this card is like it's the reason why call by the grave is so good so basically when your opponent call by or uh you know hand traps you you call by the grave you make vampire sucker more often than not the hand trap that they use is probably a zombie monster but vampire sucker can smush someone into your opponent's side of the field anyways it's a zombie monster and then you get the draw card more importantly after you activate uh your spell card which would be uh, uh vampire's domain you can tribute that monster you just gave to them to the graveyard to summon your vampire monster and not lose any of your monster advantage vampire sucker literally makes your opponent pay for using hand traps it's just it's freaking amazing one copy of borlo dragon this card is uh the best link four in the game being able to snatch your opponent's monster kind of like what your vampire monsters do but it's untargetable 3000 attack and can lower your opponent's monsters as well one copy of sorry you just skull dread this card can be made really easy inside of this deck the draw four is phenomenal being able to spell summon another monster also continues on with your plays one copy of nightmare unicorn this card is good for getting rid of opponent's problematic threats same thing with phoenix and cerberus um these cards are just really really good getting rid of cards like mizuki from your hands to the graveyard to get rid of your opponent's problematic threats is just pretty damn good um that's it for the link monsters for the xc monsters we only run three one copy of beatrice um cards just nasty good in this deck if i'm making a rank six on my first turn beatrice is the go-to card because it'll it'll set me up for my future plays one copy of Dampfear, the vampire sheridan this guy is nasty um when you're going second or if your opponent has an established board making him to get rid of your opponent's cards snatch your opponent's cards it's just really really good he's an awesome card i would play two if i had the room and then lastly is one copy of crimson bram that night vampire bram he's also a pretty decent card to special summon your opponent's monsters to your side of the field which will trigger the sucker and you can link off with them that's it for the exceed monsters for the Sparrow monsters we get a little bit complicated uh we do run ultimate azokin because there is a combo that can get you crystal wing to your side of the field very easily it's a complex combo but it'll wind up with you a crystal wing and sometimes a beatrice or whatever else you need um we also run coral dragon cards just really nutty i'm um, getting rid of opponent's cards and then it it's also another way to go into crystal wing um starters charge warrior is less likely to, for you to go into crystal wing but it does help you go into beatrice and get you a draw and then Cyframe Lord Omega to wrap up the extra deck. Now, two cards that I really wanted to play in this extra deck was number 24, Dragulus the Vampiric Dragon. Not only is it a vampire card, or not really a vampire card, it's a vampiric card, so it doesn't really work that way. But it's just it's just a really good card. I think it's undershine. And then, of course, Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss, in case you draw that Farfa. And if your opponent gets over the Beatrice thinking you don't play it, it's just a really good untargetable monster. Um, that's it for the extra deck. For the side deck, uh, we're just going to blaze through this real quick because it's very standard. Uh, three copies of Droll and Lock. Cards just uh, really good at stopping your opponent. The Ash Blossom and Ghost Bell that's left over. Get these Ghost Bells before it's too late, guys. Uh, three copies of Ghost Ogre for, you know, obvious reasons. Get over cards like Dragonic Diagram. Monster effects that activate like Megalo and such. Three copies of Shared Ride. Uh, this card's really good against... Uh, uh, strike sky striker and then three copies of evenly matched uh, if you guys can't afford evenly matched go ahead and play those kaijus if you can't afford ash blossoms you can play effect veilers if for some reason you just can't afford ghost bells and haunted mansions or trolling locks man you guys are really hitting me with the struggles um you could play zombie worlds that's a pretty decent option um but man I don't, I don't really know what else to say i think i think this deck is pretty budget overall once you take off the uh ash blossoms and ghost bells uh you can play like i said ogres and effect veilers in the main board um until you guys can get those but for the extra deck i don't know man if you guys can't afford those um actually no you don't even have to play these you can take these out and run solemn strikes or dark hole uh uh Raigeki. and then the drolls i would strongly encourage you guys to try to find a way to get but obviously you can run those for the strikes and this will be dark hole and Raigeki. lastly is the last copy excuse me of call by the grave because yeah it's it's just that good for hand traps it's good it's really good this format but phew, oh excuse me i think it's a vampire around i might need some garlic that is it for the side deck and let me show you guys um it's not necessarily a complete combo but it is literally like this combo will get you into whatever you need so let me show you guys this combo real quick 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, for this combo, there are so many different types of ending boards. There are so many extenders to this. It's just, it's, I'm telling you guys, this is insane. I just, you can say that this deck is always looking for new blood the way that it operates. So basically the combo that I'm talking about is any way to send um, a monster from the deck to the graveyard where it's Armageddon Knight or even Yuna Zombie. And you're also going to need one card to discard, uh, one vampire monster to discard. For this specific combo, I'm gonna show you guys Vampire Graces in my hand. And then lastly, you're going to need one of the vampire monsters whether it's retainer or familiar it's either or it does not matter so what you guys are going to do is start off by normal summoning yuna zombie and then using yuna zombie's effect to make him a level four and also pitching the opposite vampire monster you have from your deck to your graveyard so if you have familiar you pitch retainer if you have retainer you pitch familiar so now yuna zombie becomes a level four i don't have a dice like on hand right now but i want you guys to picture this guy as a level four next you're going to use retainer's effect sending familiar from the deck to the graveyard to special summon retainer to your side of the field now retainer's effect is going to activate and you are going to add shadow vampire from your deck to your hand use the effect of vampire familiar to pitch the vampire card that you have from your hand to your graveyard to special summon vampire familiar uh, from your graveyard to your side of the field and then use the effect of vampire familiar again to search uh vampires not i'm sorry not vampires desire uh search vampires domain from your deck to your side of the field now again there are so many iterations to this combo it is insane i'm telling you guys um one can make ultimate zulkin another can do so many things so we're just gonna activate da vampires domain and then we're gonna use both of our monsters for a link summon and that is gonna link off into our vampire sucker now an iteration of this combo is like if our opponent tried to stop one of that and we use cult by the grave uh their monster is you know a hand trap in the graveyard use vampire sucker to summon it to our side of the field then pay the 500 life points to summon shadow vampire to our side of the field and then you literally can start going off it is gonna be insane um if if you somehow had this inside of your deck and you sent frawl into the graveyard instead so let's put this inside of your deck and you said fall into the graveyard descent and you had a vampire desire inside of your hand you can turn uh your monster into actually no 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 no. it is like that my apologies it's like that you can activate desires turn yuna zombie into a five and i'm telling you guys you would go off you would summon the shadow vampire with your opponent's uh graveyard card that would special summon Scarlet Scourge to your side of the field. Scarlet Scourge would trigger to special summon Frawl into your side of the field. And then Vampire Grace would trigger to special summon itself to the side of the field. So now you have um, Shadow Vampire. This would actually, you would want that right there. You would have Shadow Vampire on your side of the field. Yuna Zombie. These two monsters are level 5. Use them to special summon because it's not a synchro summon to your side of the field. Um, you would special summon your ultimate Azokan. Now, of course, you would need a spell card to set face down to trigger its ultimate Azokan's effect. Two special summon Crystal Wing to your side of the field. And then you would use both of these monsters for Link Summon again. Now, this is when I was playing Deco Talker. There are obviously other ways to make this, but I would special summon Nightmare Unicorn to my side of the field. And then follow up with Vampire Grace and Scarlet Scourge uh, for the summon of either Beatrice or you can either summon uh vampiric uh sheridan to your side of the field again there's just like so many iterations of this combo um there's so many things you can do with this combo uh, a lot of times i actually wind up with the vampire sucker and uh let's just go over the combo one more time so i can show you what would happen uh for so for example i'm gonna just set up my hand with uh vampire familiar yuna zombie and also uh grace in my hand and, and like I said, there's so many iterations to this combo. There's so many ways you can do this. So many extenders, because if you guys have them, it's going to depend on what your hand is. So you're going to summon a Unizombie, Unizombie effect to send a Retainer to the graveyard. Retainer's effect to send Familiar to summon itself. Retainer's effect to search a uh, monster from your deck to your hand. I like to su search va Shadow Vampire because um if i'm going first this i can't attack anyway so it doesn't matter then use familiar's effect to send grace to your graveyard and then that will add vampire's domain activate domain uh, and then use these two monsters for a link summon that would be vampire sucker and then next you would use unizombie for tribute summon 
Summon Shadow Vampire. Shadow Vampire's effect, special summon Scarlet Scourge. Um, Scarlet Scourge, if you add another monster in your graveyard, obviously you special summon it. You summon the Grace to your side of the field, and then use these two monsters uh, for Beatrice. Where is that Beatrice? Use those two monsters for Beatrice. Beatrice effect, detach the Vampire Grace to your graveyard. Go ahead and send uh, Mizuki to your graveyard. Where's that Mizuki? I probably should have put this stuff out a little more. Send Mizuki to the graveyard. Mizuki effect banishes itself. Special summons Unizombie. Unizombie plus Shadow Vampire makes that side frame Lord Omega, which basically means that you're gonna have another extra monster, another monster zone that's gonna be uh, unoccupied because when Omega banishes itself, returns the Mizuki, returns whatever monster to your graveyard, comes back, you can put it in a different zone. You have Beatrice to dis detach the Scarlet Scourge, Scourge to send either a Farfa to your graveyard for more disruption, or you can, excuse me, you can even send uh, a card like, where is that card? like a second mizuki from your deck to your graveyard if i can ever find it uh and then you'll be all set like i'm telling you this deck has so many iterations i actually stole this from my vendred deck profile and kind of like mixed it up and made it a little different because vampire sucker is a little more powerful but thank you guys so much for watching another segment of the cali effect i really hope you guys enjoyed this video vampires are man i'm telling you their ceiling is there it's definitely a really fun deck to play and if you guys want to see this deck in a dual video smash that like button let's see if we can get to 200 likes i don't ask for 200 that much but 200 likes for a dual video it's going to require a lot of finessing and a lot of working hard to get you guys that dual video so that's why i'm asking for so much please like comment subscribe but most of all enjoy i hope you guys are having a great day like i am